At the end of Sequoia Drive in the borough of Wachung, there is a gravel drive laden with tall grasses. A walk along this mysterious drive leads one to an eerie clearing on the top of the first Wachung Mountain. In the clearing, there are the remains of tennis courts, invasive mugwort acquiring every inch of the cracks and heaved sections of the neglected pavement. It is quiet and isolated. Deer are the only inhabitants of the area and rarely visited or known by the public. A trip to this area offers no clues to what once existed here, but history tells us it was once the location of a thriving and charitable summer camp, Camp Endeavor. Camp Endeavor's roots can be traced back to Plainfield, New Jersey. The Union County Fresh Air Committee originally operated a camp that was run by Sarah Curry in the Netherwood section of Plainfield off of Leyland Avenue. This camp was successful, but there was a need to expand and run an independent camp. The Union County Fresh Air Committee was faced with the challenge of finding a plot of land suitable for this planned expansion. A 10-acre abandoned farm located off of Johnson Drive in the Wachung Mountains had mostly flat topography, a nearby spring for water, and a mud hole that could serve as a makeshift swimming pool. No structures, telephone lines, or electricity were nearby. Despite some of the infrastructure challenges, the Union County Fresh Air Committee agreed that this location would be most ideal for the expansion of the existing Plainfield Camp. Camp Endeavor was officially founded in 1911 by the Union County Fresh Air Committee, and a board of trustees was established. Its mission statement, shown later in this film, would be officially incorporated two years later by the Union County Christian Endeavor Societies on May 18, 1913. The camp was established to serve as a vacation destination for underprivileged children between the ages of 8 and 10, regardless of race or religion. It would be funded by donations and staffed by volunteers. The camp planned to host four 10-day sessions of 80 children per session. Those children would be recommended by local organizations with zero cost to the families. A gentleman by the name of Jesse Lounsbury would step up as one of the first volunteers to volunteer significant amounts of time to the establishment of the camp. His first project would be to build the first tent platforms next to the mud hole. Jesse was known as a jack of all trades, applying his building and carpentry skills to the establishment of the camp. Soon after, he would meet Helen Squire. Both Jesse and Helen were Christians and members of the First Presbyterian Church of Plainfield. Their views on volunteering and giving back to the greater community aligned, and they would marry. Helen would follow in Jesse's footsteps, and after their marriage, she would assist in keeping alive the mission statement of the camp. Their dedication of time and services to the camp was inspired from a Bible passage that says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. They did not have children. Their commitment was to serve the underprivileged children of the area, eventually earning them the title camp directors, a position they would hold for some time. Following their marriage, Jesse and Helen would work to renovate an old barn that was located on the Camp Endeavor property. The renovated barn would later become their home, but not before it was moved from the camp property to an adjacent lot and then placed on a new foundation. The home is still standing on what was then known as Camp Endeavor Road, now a private lane. Several additions and renovations to the home have made the original structure unrecognizable. During the winter months, Jesse would plow the road from his home down to Johnson Drive and continue to Bonnie Byrne Road as a courtesy to keep the camp property accessible in the winter. The earliest campers had met at the foot of Bonnie Byrne Road and hiked or rode in a horse-drawn carriage up the mountain to the camp. In 1919, Jesse Lounsbury built the camp's first building, a dining hall. Shortly after, the Board of Trustees started fundraising efforts to build additional facilities that would go on to include boys' and girls' dormitories, counselors' living quarters, an office, infirmary, mess hall, a staff dining room, storage rooms, a handicraft room, enclosed rainy day shelters, an outdoor barbecue fireplace, a baseball field, playground, and pool. Telephone and electric services were installed to the camp during the Great Depression, the direct result of telephone and electrical companies seeking infrastructure work 
for important facilities to keep their employees busy. The Sisters of Mercy provided a portion of the Mount St. Mary's property as right-of-way between Route 22 and the camp to construct these utilities. Over the years, many of the structures and facilities that were fundraised for by the Board of Trustees would become a reality, constructed through the help of volunteers and local assistants. Interestingly enough, the pool, originally constructed in 1922, would be retrofitted by Jesse Lounsbury in 1949 with a heating plant to warm the waters. The fence posts that surrounded the pool consisted of salvaged steel from a World War I troop transport ship. Activities at the camp included playing on the playground, building sandcastles, reading in the afternoon, and participating in puppet and magic shows. Campers could be found playing softball, swimming, dancing, and expressing creativity in the crafts room. There were even hikes through the virgin wooded landscape to Weldon Quarry, the Muldinke Castle, and as far away as the Berkeley Heights Railway Station. The day would often end by roasting marshmallows around a campfire. Camp Endeavor hosted events for local organizations as a thank you to the greater community that supported them through donations and volunteerism. The camp was opened as a picnic area to Girl Scouts throughout the summer. The Sisters of Mount St. Mary's would host an outing each year at the camp. The Boy Scouts built a cabin in the woods nearby where they split and stored firewood, a resource that was used by both organizations. Camp Endeavor did not operate for more than 50 years without its challenges and setbacks. In 1927, the camp had to shut down due to a diphtheria scare. Interestingly enough, the camp was almost completely destroyed by a brush fire that rapidly swept along the top of the first Wachung Mountain. If not for the quick thinking of the Boy Scouts to build a backfire using stored firewood in the nearby cabin mentioned earlier, the camp may have been destroyed. Camp Endeavor was a teaching camp, one where counselors and students learned from each other. Most staff members were volunteers. Few were compensated. The camp would eventually welcome children who were handicapped, those suffering from cerebral palsy, and later expanding their network to children just outside of Union County. Campers from 18 different countries, all religions, races, and creeds attended the camp throughout the years. The Paper Mill Playhouse would take note of the progressive work happening at the camp and decided to donate proceeds from a performance of My Fair Lady in April of 1964 to sponsor children who would be attending the camp. The Asbury Park Bathing Association would send used bathing suits to the camp so they could be reused for the children. Donations of food and supplies were provided to the camp by locals throughout the years. It is estimated that more than 17,700 campers visited Camp Endeavor by the close of summer 1964. 1964 also marked a bittersweet milestone for the camp. Jesse and Helen Lounsbury would retire as camp directors after 54 years of volunteer service. Mr. Lounsbury recalled that his favorite activity each morning was to make cocoa for the staff and campers, before he made his commute to Rutherford, New Jersey, where he worked at Rutherford Press Incorporated. He also noted that his retirement as camp director was, quote, a difficult one, but a worthwhile thing to do. Wally's Tavern on the Hill, which would later become known as the Colorado Cafe, and just a half mile away from the camp, hosted a dedication dinner for Jesse and Helen Lounsbury, celebrating their unmatched service to the Camp Endeavor, where over 100 people attended. They continued to stay involved as directors emeritus following their retirement celebration. Camp Endeavor operated for another eight years following Jesse and Helen Lounsbury's retirement before it closed permanently following a merger in 1972 with Camp Brett, located in Hunterdon County. The merger would result in the creation of Camp Brett Endeavor Incorporated. According to the deed, Camp Brett Endeavor Incorporated would sell the 10-acre plot to the borough of Wachung on May 20th, 1972 for $54,500. The sale brought the unofficial end to the Wachung Camp Endeavor legacy. The property would no longer be used as a camp and many of the structures would lay abandoned. The structures would, over the course of time, be demolished 
as the residential neighborhoods of Sequoia Drive, Bayberry Lane, Oakwood Road, Grandview, and Skyline Drive were constructed and expanded. As of 2021, the Borough of Watching continues discussions on how the vacant property can best be utilized. Discussions over community gardens, specifically in the area where the existing tennis courts exist today, seem to be most favored by the borough and the community.